This is me. A year ago, I made a decision that changed my life forever. I'm talking about becoming a digital nomad. So I just arrived at Bangkok. The ability to harness digital skills and to work from wherever you want. Literally wherever you want. This lifestyle is not only attainable for you, I think right now is the best time in human history to go for it and you'll learn why and how during the video. I'm currently in Bangkok where this whole thing started for me a few years ago, but more on that later. I will also head to Koh Phangan in this video, a digital nomad paradise. I set out this journey at the end of 2019. I was living in Berlin and had the urge to see the world for a while already. So I cancelled my apartment, sold my furniture and booked my first trip. So long story short, I will be a digital nomad from here on. That's probably the best definition of what I'm gonna be, uh, working digitally uh, and traveling the world. Spoiler, you won't. You will move back into your mom's apartment for a whole year. While I love my mom and I'm really lucky to have that fallback option, if you moved out and lived on your own for three years, moving back into your mom's house kind of sucks. I always want to be in control of my own life, responsible and autonomous. So I was in a dilemma. No one knew how long borders would remain closed. And I didn't want to commit to a new apartment in Germany either because, well, I wanted to travel. This left me quite paralyzed in my mom's basement for almost a year. I felt kind of caged. As weeks and then months passed by, I grew more agitated and was unable to decide what's next. It seemed almost out of my control. Therefore, I was looking for something that helped time pass faster. Back in Berlin, I actually made a second resolution. Traveling was only one part of it. I also want to learn everything I can about filmmaking, from storytelling to editing, post-production and sound design. So I started a YouTube channel and made videos. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. This video will be a little bit different. In this video I want to talk about two misconceptions. This time I will cover Robert Breedlove's Masters and Slaves of Money. This is the conclusion of the In Search of series. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Looking back, I regret not really becoming better at any filmmaking and storytelling skills. This is about to change. And the start of my own channel was not the only silver lining of the pandemic. Remote work was suddenly legit. The acceptance to work from home or even from another country has massively increased. I believe this would have happened sooner or later anyway, but more slowly. The pandemic really gave remote work a kickstart. Now you might still argue that when it's all said and done and we are getting back to normal, whatever that means, companies will want to have you back in the office and your digital nomad dream evaporates. While this is certainly true for some companies, it's not true for others. A global workplace analytics survey found that 76% of the respondents want to continue working from home at least 2.5 days per week on average. And employers have to deal with that. If they want the top talent, which they absolutely do, well, they might need to reconsider their remote work position and let people work from outside the office. And by the way, saving office costs, having a harder working labor force and being able to recruit all over the world instead of in a 30 mile radius are huge advantages. Not everyone even wants to work location independent, and that's totally fine. There are some strong benefits though. First of all, you save a ton of time, because there is no commute, which has historically only trended upwards in time spent. In South Korea, for example, 25% of the workforce has a commute of over 90 minutes. Compare this to how I start my day. I can get up at whatever time I like, usually 8am, and drink a cup of coffee while enjoying the sun and a book before starting my workday. You tell me which way seems better to you. Two out of five people consider the commute the worst part of their day. If you can get rid of what you hate most, that's pretty awesome. There are of course downsides to remote work as well, like less human interactions, some have trouble finding work-life balance, or the lack of a dedicated workspace. Popular digital nomad destinations offer a variety of co-working spaces, social activities and more to ease these downsides. To me, it's completely obvious that digital nomadism will rise with more remote opportunities. I mean, just look at this trend curve. One thing is crystal clear. More people are now able to work from anywhere in the world than ever before. And for me, it was finally time to do so as well. I started out on the Canary Islands, then stayed in Valencia and Malaga before coming back to Germany over Christmas. What was supposed to be a six week trip at first became four months and my hunger to be a digital nomad did not fade. It only grew from here. This year I went to the Austrian Alps to ski for the first quarter while working on more videos until recently. Being there I was already thinking about where to go next. And I asked a friend I made on Gran Canaria about his next destination. So it was decided. I'm going back to where my dream of working from around the globe started. Thailand. <laughs> So I just arrived at Bangkok, strolling through a park right here. It's extremely humid and also very hot, but that was to be expected. It's also very rainy, which I didn't know was the case this early in the year. 
You can even hear the sun thunderstorm right now, maybe. I'm already on my way to my Airbnb, where we'll stay the next two days. And yeah, then I will go to Koh Phangan and meet Manu and his friend. This in my eyes is one of the biggest and most important differences between digital nomadism and classical variants of tourism. You stay longer, so everything is slower. You're not really in a rush, so there's no need to cram everything in a few days and do all the tourist activities that you maybe want to do. You can spread them out through a longer time frame. You are not a local, but you're not really a tourist either. If you stay somewhere for many, many weeks, this is not an escape from regular life. This is your life at that point. This also means that you are working. You need to generate income to support your life, just like everyone else. Now, if I'm honest, this lifestyle is probably not for everyone. I do, however, believe that everyone can strongly benefit from at least trying it once. There are some stressors that you undergo that are quite different from normal life. It's a constant re-adaptation. New environments, new routines, new languages. But let's face it, and here comes a cheesy quote, but it's very true. The only constant in life is change. The stability you currently have can be shook in an instant, rattled to the core, and you might lack the capacity and resources to overcome uncertain, unexplored, unknown times. Being exposed to situations like these in a minor form can really strengthen you. A fear you might have is loneliness, not meeting people you're comfortable with, being homesick, missing your family and friends, and I probably can't take that away from you. I'm also not the very best example here. I actually really like being alone. I very rarely feel lonely. And I think solitude can really help develop your character. But what I can tell you is that if you want to make friends, you absolutely will. 100%. You are meeting a combination of the most open-minded, curious, and most importantly, freest people in the world. Combine that with locals who give you a complete new perspective on things, and you're really in a good place. It's very different compared to what you might be experiencing at home, where you're with the same group of friends every single time. At least that's the case for me. I don't even say that making new friends all the time around the globe is better than sticking with your friends you have at home, but it's definitely worth experiencing. It's just different. And yeah, sure, some of these friendships are really short-lived, but not all of them. It's actually time to meet one of them now, so I have to go. I spent the day at the pier before getting picked up by the two friends I visited here. They did a day trip to another island, so they weren't here yet. Now, if I would be a travel vlogger, I would ram a camera in their face on our first encounter to finish this story neatly, but I don't really like doing that. I wanted to feel our meetup being genuine and not make them uncomfortable by pointing a camera at them. So there is no footage of us together. As you can see, I arrived at the final destination for this video. But I still have two points to make to round up the digital nomad experience. First of all, while I think being a digital nomad is a very interesting way of life, I don't claim that it's perfect. It definitely comes with its own set of challenges. One of them is relationships or love life in general. I haven't really figured this out before traveling, but now that I am changing places frequently, it of course only got worse. You are either in for some long distance time apart, which I had before and don't really look forward to having again, or you need to find someone who is as flexible and free as you are, which honestly really niches down potential partners. It's quite a shame, because it's much easier to get into a position like this than people think. If you prioritize it, that is. One path is to learn a skill that is in demand and can be performed remotely, which is everything that happens online, digitally. You don't have to become the best of the best in a certain field. Sometimes it's enough to creatively recombine what you already know. I've made a video on this path of the generalist that you should check out next. Thank you for watching this video. This channel is all about freedom and liberty. So if you care to see more, make sure to subscribe and then I see you next time.